Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 5, Two Graphing Stories. Example 1. Consider the story. Maya and Earl live at opposite ends of the hallway in their apartment building. Their doors are 50 feet apart. Each starts at his or her own door and walks at a steady pace toward each other and stops when they meet. What would their graphing story look like if we put them on the same graph? When the two people meet in the hallway, what would be happening on the graph? Sketch the graph that shows their distance from Maya's door. So we want to graph something in distance that are 50 feet apart. And what else? What else could we graph? Distance and what? Time, maybe? How long it took them to reach the same location in the hallway. Okay, so if I create a graph like so, and this is time. Time is usually your x-axis, your independent variable. Time. And then we need a unit of measurement. Um, it's not going to take them minutes or hours, so let's use seconds. Okay, and then we need a vertical. We don't have to worry about anything that's on the negative. We don't have negative time nor negative distance, so we're not going to go beyond the origin of zero, zero. And since this is time, this would be distance from Maya's door. In feet. Okay, now we don't need to use exact values. It didn't give us any information. We know their doors are 50 feet apart. So if one is starting here, this would be Maya. Zero distance from her door is zero, so I'll put her here. Everybody agree with that? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graph Maya's in red, and I will graph Earl in green. So since Maya's at her door, the distance from her door is zero. Earl is up here, and we do know that that would be 50 because it tells us that their doors are 50 feet apart. So he's 50 feet from her door. As time goes by, he's getting closer and closer to zero feet from her door, and she's going further and further away from her door. So the graph, therefore, would look like this. So Earl leaves his door at the same time as Maya, going this direction. Maya leaves her door and heads in his direction at the same speed. So his slope, if that was negative 2, hers would be positive 2 because their rate of change, their absolute value rate of change would be the same. And then they would meet right there at a certain time, which would be so many seconds. So that's what the graph would look like. He's getting closer to 0 feet from her door. She's getting further than 0 feet from her door. They would meet somewhere between 50 and 100, or 50 and 0 feet. And actually, it would be at the 25-foot mark because we were told they were traveling at the same speed. So they'd both be 25 feet from her door and his door when they met. Okay, exploratory challenge exercises one through four is about this video. It says, watch the following graphing story. There's a YouTube link. The video shows a man and girl walking on the same same stairway. So I'm going to show a video within a video. So here's the video, and here we go. There's no sound, so here's a man walking up his stairs, and he walks to the top. So he started at zero and climbed and then he walked around upstairs so his elevation never changed while he was on the second floor and now he turns around and he is coming back down 
And as he's partway down, a little girl starts up. They meet at a point. He's down at the bottom. She's continuing, and then she reaches the top. Okay. So there's the video. We need to graph. So it says, graph the man's elevation on the stairway versus time in seconds. So I will graph the man in red. So he started on the first floor, which would be elevation zero at time zero. So he would start at the origin. This is time in seconds. This is elevation in feet. So he climbed the stairs at a certain pace. And we don't have any unit of measurement, so this will work. It's not recognizing my ruler. There we go. All right, so he climbed up the stairs at a, for a certain period of time, and then he was upstairs for a minute, so his elevation for a period of time did not change. Now, I just drew that real long because it wasn't recognizing my ruler. So let's just say he did that. Okay, so he climbed the stairs, and then he was upstairs for a period of time. So time passed, but his elevation did not change. And then he, and then he came back down the stairs. So I'm just going to graph him first. So he was upstairs for a little bit, and then he descended down the stairs until he got back to the first floor. So there's the graph of him. <clears throat> he started on the first floor at time zero. He climbed the stairs for a period of time, and then for a period of time he was upstairs, and then for a period of time he was climbing down the stairs again until he got back down to the first floor. And then the, time, the, the girl was still walking up the stairs, so what would happen to his height or elevation at that point? It would have flattened out. So this is what his graph would have looked like. Okay, so he came down and then he was on the first floor for a period of time. Okay, so now let's graph the girl in green. Okay, he was upstairs already, and then he started walking downstairs. So let's just say that he's walking down the stairs right here. He got part of the way down, I'd say about there, and that's when she came along, and she was walking to the stairs. So her elevation up until this point right here was the first floor or zero. So she came into the picture about there. And then she started climbing the stairs. Okay, for some reason this is not recognizing my ruler. Let's try this side. It's supposed to snap to my ruler. Try it one more time here. Nope. Let me delete the ruler. Okay, the other thing I want to take into consideration, too, is it looked like they were walking at about the same pace. So since the rate of change is the same, here is the rate of change for the man. So I'm just going to slide this over so they're parallel, so they have the same rate of change. And they met not quite at half, so I would say that her graph would be over here. And they met right there, and she continued up to the second floor. So I will move this portion over here. So she was walking on the first floor, coming to the stairs, and then she st started climbing up, and they met at a certain point. And then the clock was still ticking, or the, or the video was still playing, and she was upstairs for a moment. So there is the graph of her. Okay, move my ruler out of the way. So he started at time zero. He walked up the stairs. He was upstairs for a few moments. He walked down the stairs. She started walking up the stairs. They met at a certain point. Actually, she didn't start walking up the stairs until he was already partway down, I believe. But anyway, so that would move this over here somewhere. But you get the idea, okay? She is walking up the stairs, they met, she continued up, he continued down, she's now on the second floor, he's now on the first floor. So number two asks, how did you account for the fact that the two people did not start at the same time? 
Well, the girl did not come into the video until the father was already upstairs. So that's why she started at a later time. Number three says, suppose the two graphs intersect at a point 24, 4. So now they're saying the intersection point is 24, 4. That is right here. So that is 24 seconds. Right here, 24, comma, 4. And so this is elevation 4 feet. So at 24 seconds, they were at 4 feet is what that means. So what is the meaning of this point in the situation? At 24 seconds, they were at the same location, which is 4 feet off of the first floor. Number four. Is it possible for two people walking in stairwells to produce the same graphs you have been using and not pass each other at time 12 seconds? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so in this case, yes, it is possible. It, it says walking in stairwells, it's missing one component, walking in the same stairwells. So if they're walking in two different stairwells, then their graphs could appear to be the same as our graph, but then not ever intersect. So they would have to be graphed on separate graphs because they would never have met. They would have been at the same elevation, but in two different locations in the world. So they would not be graphed on the same graph. Number six, what are the coordinates of the point of intersection of the two graphs? What time do Duke and Shirley pass each other? Okay, well, we were given that. It was the point 4, 24. I'm sorry, it's 24, 4. So it's 24, 4. So it says, at what time do Duke and Shirley pass each other? At 24 seconds. Write down the equation of the line that represents Duke's motion as he moves up the ramp and the equation of the line that represents Shirley's motion as she moves down the ramp. Show that the coordinates of the point you found in the question above satisfy both equations. Okay, I made a mistake and I scrolled too far and I skipped all of this, so we're on a new problem. <clears throat> it says, consider the story. Duke starts at the base of a ramp and walks up it at a constant rate. His elevation increases by three feet every second. Okay, so he started at the base. So he's at zero, zero. So let me bring in a graph. Okay, so I created this graph and it says that Duke starts at the base of the ramp. So he's gonna start at zero, zero. He walks up it at a constant rate. That means it's a linear function. Constant rate means the rate of change never changes. That will be the slope. His elevation increases three feet every second. So that's our slope, three feet per second. So I chose three as my unit of measurement. Three, six, nine, 12 multiples of three. So I'm going to draw a line that has a slope of three. I will graph him in red. So I'll mark that, Duke red, start at zero, and uh, go up like so. So at 10 seconds, he's at 30 feet because 10 times three is 30. Shirley starts at the top of the ramp, 25 feet high, and begins walking down the ramp at a constant rate. Her elevation decreases two feet per second. So she's starting at 25, which is a little bit higher than 24. And I need to change colors. Let's uh, do green for her. Shirley will be in green. Shirley, you can't be serious. Okay, so there's 25. So I am going to draw a grid. Now, after two seconds, or after one second, she's going to drop two feet. So it's going to be 24, 22, 20. So I'm going to subtract two every time. 24, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 
10, 12, 7, 12. So I'm looking for integers so it's easy to graph. So right there at 12. 10, 8, 6. So 10, 6 also is an integer. So it was 0, 24, or 5, 0, 25. Did we start at 25? Yes, so these are wrong. Crikey. Okay. 25, 23, 21, 221, 21, 19, 17, 15, 515, 13, 11, 9, 7, 5. Okay, so I have a few points there. They are integers, so it makes it easier for me to graph accurately. And graphing is all about precision. Take your time. And I would say right about here. Okay. So there's the graph of her. Let me just back this up to here. And she can't go below zero. Okay. All right. So there's our graphs of these two individuals. Duke in red. Shirley in green. It says, what are the coordinates of the points of intersection? Well, the point of intersection is right here at 5, 15. What, at what time do Duke and Shirley pass each other? Well, at time t equals 5. Number 7. Write down the equation of the line that represents Duke's motion as he moves up the ramp and the equation of the line that represents Shirley's motion as she moves down the ramp. So they're asking for linear equations of these. His y-intercepts, so remember, y equals, y equals mx plus b. B is my y-intercept, B is 0. M is my slope, he is rising at a rate of 3 feet per second. So my equation is y equals 3x plus 0, or simply y equals 3x. Her equation is going to be, and I'm going to rewrite y equals mx plus b. Her y-intercept was 25. Her rate of change was negative 2. So her equation is y equals negative 2x plus 25. Okay, I need to make one minor change to this. Wherever you see an x, it should be a t. So let me just erase the final answer. We're not talking in terms of x and y, we're talking in terms of t and distance. Okay, y equals 3t, and this should be a t, so that should be a t, so her equation is going to be y equals negative 2t plus 25. Show that the coordinates of the point you found in the question above satisfy both equations. Okay, so I'm just simply going to substitute in this 5 and this 15 into both equations. So y is 15, and t, so this is t, and this is y, x, y, t, y, and t equals 5. Well, 15 equals 3 times 5, which is 15. So it's true in his graph. Now I'm going to substitute in y and t here, so it's going to be 15 equals negative 2 times t, which is 5, plus 25. 15 equals negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, plus 25. And 15 equals negative 10 plus 25 is 15, and it satisfies her equation as well. Okay, that is the end of Lesson 5. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.